<laughs> I think one of the hardest things to communicate to people is the idea of communication. That a word means what it says and says what it means. In other words, Jesus tried to communicate and speak in a very plain and direct manner. So much so that children seem to understand it a lot easier than adults did. He said, let your yes be yes. So, yes means yes. It's not a question of let your handshake be your yes or your circumstances dictate whether yes means yes or whether your agreement is temporary based upon how you feel the next day. But he said, let your yes be yes. And let your no mean no. Because he said more than that comes transgression. Or you're liable to get yourself into sticking your foot in your mouth and somehow, you know, creating something that's not what it means. And it doesn't mean what it says. So it's not a question of using simple words per se, but letting the word itself speak for itself. In other words, don't change the word. Don't try to add to the word, and don't try to subtract from the word. That is the second law of what I call spiritual reality, is that you don't change things and you don't rearrange them. They are what they are, the way they are. And that's what I call my, my uh, is. What it is, is the way it is. It's a item-specific, looking at, examining, and understanding it the way it is. I can't tell you how ridiculous it sounds in some ways, but how really the the theologically it and logically it fits. If you looked at most schools of interpretation, commentary, explanation, hermeneutic, homiletic, and all the different ways that they try to create this theological premise of how to, you know, how do you look at this? How do you understand this? You know, what language do you use? You know, how, what school of thought do you come from? No, I, I come from the simple school. It is, I-S, item specific, what it is. Where you read it, leave it there. Why do you have to take what's in Genesis and jump to John? Are you going to understand it better? Not really. I mean, you can you can get a little bit of insight into it, you know, and as long as you treat it as insight, that's okay. Because it's insight. But, frankly, if it's written in John, it's supposed to be in John. That's why it's in John. <laughs> Call me stupid, okay? But my item specific, my is what it is, way of looking at the scripture, is simply a read. I can read the word and trust the Holy Spirit to... Make it fit me, because then I can understand it, because it's for me, because it is what it is. I know, maybe you won't get it, but I can't make it any simpler than that, because the more that I deal with this last generation, the more I find that because of all this bombardment of terminology, political correctness, sociology, mind games, head games, spinning the truth, spin doctoring, <laughs> and all the other things, even, even, you know, programming and bad programming, that people have a hard time just reading it for what it is. So that's why we have this explanation a lot, you know, starting off, and, you know, we're going to try to explain it less, maybe, you know, but if you really want to just read the word and just get what it says out of it, then Stick with me, because we're not going to go into commentary that commentators have. We're not going to get into explanations that explainers have. We're just going to let it say what it says, each line, as it is, where it is, the way it is. Does that make sense to you? I hope so, because today I was dealing with a lot of people that no matter what I said, you know, however simple I said, look, this is just the way it is, and they couldn't seem to get it, you know, so it's like, well, okay. What can I say? But it's written there for a reason. You have it in your hand for a purpose. It's been designed by God. You can get deeper if you want to. 
That's a Bible study. You can go other directions you want to. You can comment on it. You can do other things. But when you are reading it and your faith comes by hearing, then it's by direct application of God's Holy Spirit taking it from what's there into here. And it's not meant to be filtered through anybody's glasses or an interpretation. It's meant to be as it is. It just so happens we're using the Open Bible, so that's why we call this the Open Bible. Don't care what Bible you got. It just so happens that I'm using the King James. Doesn't matter to me what Bible you use. Don't care. You go there. But this is just what it is, the way it is. And it happens that I'm using the Open Bible, an old one, and it's a King James. So now we've got all the explanation out of the way. We're in Genesis chapter 1. And we're down to verse 8. No, actually verse 9 and verse 10. And I hate to use numbers because like I told, and I mention it just about every time that I do this, if you really want to get blessed out of the scriptures, find a Bible that has no chapters and no verses in it. Meaning that the numbers are taken out, the chapters are taken out, the verses are taken out, so that you can just read it straight through. You'll be blessed. It's an interesting way of looking at it the Bible as a whole, and it's kind of a neat neat thing for you to learn if you want to try it sometime. You'll be blessed. Trust me, you will. You might get a different understanding of it, but you know, you'll be blessed. Then you won't be regulated, or you won't have this fractured way of thinking about it when you have to keep using numbers and verses and names that are added when they published it, not when God wrote it. God didn't care about the numbers. They aren't there. So, in verse 8, I mean verse 9, and God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good. Verse 9 and verse 10. I always am blessed, because it says, and God said. So... If you got a problem with creation, if you got a problem with whatever we just whatever we're reading, you gotta remember God said it. That's your problem. It isn't man wrote it. It isn't Moses wrote it. It isn't somebody did it. It says, and God said. That's the answer. Now, if you have a problem with God, go talk to him about it. If you think he's a liar, go talk to him about it. If you think he's wrong, go talk to him about it. It's not about religion or science. It's about what God said. <laughs> so, God said it, and it's not a question of, I believe it. It's just God said. That's all. That's how simple it is. And that's in verse 9. And God said. So, what did he say? He said, and this is God's voice, obviously, and it's God saying it. Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear. So God says, bluntly, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place. So he's just saying, okay, heaven, waters are under it. We need to kind of, they're all over the place. We need to gather them together in one place. So they're stuck in one place. Where doesn't say, who knows, who cares? We're gathering it together in one place. So could it be something more, some big expanse? Don't know, doesn't say. Could it be some tiny thing? Don't know, doesn't say. Remember, if it doesn't say, it doesn't say. So don't go there. Why bother? You can get really excited about what you add to the scripture, but if it doesn't say, then God didn't say it. But God did say, <clears throat> and what did he say? Remember, always go back to what God said. Don't go by what you think he said, because that's how he trips, trips up later on. But what did God say? And Satan always trips everyone up because he says, half God said. Ooh, so maybe it's pretty important to mark out in blue for God and red for Jesus, maybe. <laughs> Just kidding. But we need to remember God said, and God said, 
let the waters under the heaven. Not heavens, not heavenlies, not sky, not universe, not anything else. It just says, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place. Not into, but unto one place. So he's gathering them unto one place somewhere. And that place we don't know yet because it's just all the waters are, here we are, gathered together. It could be a sphere, unto. It could be a flat, unto. It could be a triangle, unto. It could be a hexagon. It could be anything. So remember, God isn't limited by your understanding. God just says what he says and the rest he doesn't say. So don't add to it and don't subtract from it. Let it be the way it is, what it is, gathered unto the waters in one place. And so he did. And let the dry land appear. Ooh. So he gathered them into one place and he says, let the dry land appear. Let. Now that's a weird word. Now that makes me scratch my head. Does that mean it came out of the water? Does that mean that it parted the water? Does that mean that it changed the water into land? You know, when you let something appear, it's almost like you give it permission. So, God doesn't say, except what he said. Let the dry land appear. He doesn't say, I created dry land out of water. He doesn't say, oh, well, I had this great big blue marble and I decided to pull land out from under the water. No, he doesn't say that either, does he? He just says, uh, let the dry land appear. So where did the dry land come from? It doesn't say. It says, let it appear. Interesting, isn't it? It's kind of funny because, you know, it says that let the waters under the heaven be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. Was the land there first and then he gathered the waters on top of the dry land? Doesn't say. See, was it that there was, he gathered the waters together and somewhere inside these waters is the capability to become dry land? Like, kind of like, take the H2O out or something, or maybe rearrange the molecules? Doesn't say, just says, let the dry land appear. Could the dry land have appeared out of nowhere? Doesn't say, does it? You see... All the speculation always comes from wanting to make an explanation for God. Well, we got to explain it. What if somebody asks? God said, that's all you need. God said, let the dry land appear. And guess what? It was so. So when God said it, it became so. So what God said happened. Is it, did it happen because God said, or did it happen because God said so? <laughs> Doesn't say, does it? It says that God said, and it was so. So, don't get carried away about God speaking a word of creation. Doesn't say that either. Just says, and God said, and it was so. Sounds to me like God can say something, and he doesn't say how, he doesn't say where, he doesn't say what, he doesn't say when, he doesn't need to. He's God. So, the reality is, is it was so. And that's all we know. So, <laughs> doesn't satisfy. Guess what? God never said he had to explain to you creation. He said, I said, God said. That's all he said. Oh well. And God said, and God called the dry land earth. And the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good. In verse 10. And God called the dry land earth. It doesn't say he named it. It says he called it that. Now, yeah, calling it, naming it, yeah, to me, same thing, you know. 
You can get carried away with something if you want to there. But it is interesting that he called it Earth. Now, it's not terra. It's not terra firma. It's not some other word. It's not the whatever people get into with this whole idea of some other name. He called it Earth. And he only called the dry land Earth. He didn't call the universe or the planet Earth. He called the dry land Earth. Better get that down, you know, because you might want to kind of get a handle here because after he called the dry land Earth, it says the gathering together of the waters called he seas. The waters were gathered together he called seas. It's not as though the waters are surrounded by land, is it? But the waters are gathered together. Now, how does that work? How do you gather together water? I wonder if it has anything to do with, like, you know, the kind of like when the, the water becomes up into the vapors and goes into the clouds and then it rains back down and it kind of, you know, like runs down from the rivers all the way into the seas. I mean, is there anything there? You know, I mean, who knows? Maybe. If you think about it, there might be a lot there to learn from. But that's not what God said, is it? Doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Doesn't mean it might not be true. It just means that God didn't say it. Not in Genesis 1, 10. And so God called the dry land earth and the gathering together of the waters called he seas. Now, didn't he call them oceans? Nope. Wonder why. Now, I have personal things on all of this stuff, you know, because I've been studying this a long time. But can I say that based upon item specific? No. So in creation, in the beginning, God called the gathering together of waters seas, not oceans. Not the Atlantic Ocean, not the Pacific Ocean, not the Indian Ocean, not any ocean, but seas. Interesting. And God called the gathering together of waters seas. Hmm. And God saw that it was good. So God saw that it was good that he had called the earth, earth, and he called the seas, seas, and he called the gathering together of the waters, the seas, and he called the land that came out, or that he, what did he say? What did God say? Did it come out of the water? Do you remember? Or are you going to change the word into what you think you know? And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth. So the land that appeared, he called earth. Interesting. What would you think if someone told you, and God gathered the waters together and he said, let the dry land appear and he called it earth instead of the way we normally think. Well, you know, it was kind of like a big blue marble and there was water all over and then, you know, God created the earth and then all this stuff. Or let the dry land appear. Funny how item specific, how what it is, it is, how that might reveal something different than the way we heard it, than maybe the way we were taught, than maybe the way we understand, because in order to open this book, you got to know how to read it. You got to let it kind of speak for itself. You kind of got to let God himself answer the questions by himself for you, those things that you yourself want to know more about. Because you see, what God said happened. And it was so. And he saw it was good. So if you want to know what is good, you really need to know what God said.